So with that, I would love to jump into why Yeshua spoke in parables. So before I get into um, the text itself, I wanna I wanna lay something out there. And Regina and I were discussing this because I don't think I put I don't think I put out the video from our our discussion on Wednesday. But we were discussing about masks, and we were talking about you know our authentic self versus the mask and the roles that we play. But one of the things that we were discussing was how easily it is to get tripped up on narratives. And I need to say this because we have been conditioned, those of us who have been students of the Bible, the English version, there's narratives all over the place. The whole Bible is narratives after narratives after narratives. When we begin looking into the hidden aspects and we look through the oral tradition of being able to see the codes, if we try to connect it to the narrative, we're going to miss. We're going to think things that aren't, because it has nothing to do with the narrative. So let me try to rephrase this. Light is information. Life, light has no narratives. It doesn't attach itself to any storylines. It doesn't attach itself to emotions. Light is light and is. So when we begin to look into these narratives, we begin to diminish the light. Does that make sense? Because we connect it to a place of narratives where then judging comes in. Then we put in good and we put in evil and we put in all of these narratives so that we divide ourselves and choose a side. Well, that was fine in the spiritual adolescent side for us to experience the difference of having love and not having love. What does love look like? What does love, you know, not having love look like? That's really what it boils down to. And not having love is really in the camp of fear because it's the exact opposite of love. So we have to remove the narratives for us to see the light of what is being communicated to us outside of the narratives because the narratives are always going to trip you up. So let's take it one step further. If you connect it to a narrative in your own life, it will trip you up because it is in formation for inward formation. It just is. So hopefully... Because what will happen is if we don't, then we get emotionally invested into it and we get drawn into our narrative and then we miss the whole thing because we're trying to remove ourselves to exit out of the matrix. This matrix has drawn us into the narratives to hold us in, to separate us. We are trying to stand above and over the matrix, over the waters of chaos into the waters of Shalom. The waters of Shalom don't have narratives. It is love and light. It is unconditional love. It is overstanding the matrix and not being pulled in. So when we go into this, I'm asking all of us to kind of leave those narratives aside, leave our egos out, leave the roles that we play behind us and see what is being said to our heart and to our spirit without getting pulled in emotionally. And I'm not saying that this is going to be an emotional difficult one. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that let's, appro let's approach it through the spirit level in the place of where light and love is. Does that make sense? That's really where I'm wanting to take us so that we can just see it without getting it clouded and muddied with all these lower narratives that are constantly trying to pull us in to emotional bondage and entanglement. So let's go ahead and share my screen and I will pull it up. <laughs> Obviously, I got lots of documents. I, the bottom of my screen looks like Ken's computer because whenever I go look in his computer, he actually has probably double the files open than I do. That's kind of funny. <laughs> yes, Greg. Here, is it possible to make it bigger? Yep. Absolutely. Because we don't we don't we don't need to see each other. We just need to make the text bigger. I will get you guys out of the way. There we go. That's the beautiful thing about Zoom. You as the user actually can zoom in as well. So even oh, if I didn't she's even not know you could in, do that. That's awesome, yep, on my on my phone and the computer, you can just zoom in, and it you have the. That's why they call it Zoom, I think. <laughs> Imagine that! I didn't even know that. I'm learning stuff all over, left and right. This is good. This is a good day. I love it when I can learn new things. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. How's how's this so far? Is that is that good? Because I don't mind zooming in on my side. Is that good, Greg? Can you see it? Is that better?
Hopefully it is. We'll just, we'll go with that. Okay, so the verse that we are looking at today is, um, and, I, and I really appreciate Janet McGeer's work. Um, I have John Etheridge's, Dr. John Etheridge's in the green. I have the King James Version in purple, and I have Janet McGeer's in the black. And so I'm just going to read uh, Janet McGeer's work. And his disciples came near and said to him, why do you speak in parables with them? There's not too much change. Uh, you'd be surprised of how many times... <laughs> Even the translations are completely different between Etheridge and King James and Janet McGeera. So this is one is pretty close. So what are we looking at in the first word here? So coming near, coming near. Now, the very first thing that I want to show you on this is that in coming near, we have, we have mother and father both being connected to here. That's why we have the vavs. We have the vav on the prefix and we have the vav on the suffix. So this is already saying is drawing near to both mother and father. That's, that's a huge piece for us to getting to. So mother teaches us humility and father teaches us meekness, which is power under control. So this is in the place of drawing near to mother and father. And when we look at the letters, I'm not going to go into uh, the meanings uh, of it yet. Let's go and take a look at the letters. So this is the compression of light within the circle of time between the light and, light and the dark, where we find the narrow path in between to raise us up from being poor and destitute to be first fruit leaders in order to build ourselves on the inside through the 222, the two paths of the 22 letters. So just, you know, if, if we were never even to look at the definition of the words and just look at the letters, there's much being said to us. So drawing near to mother and father allows us to compress the light, to raise us up, to build ourselves on the inside. Now, when we dive into the meanings of it, what is this talking about here? Well, this word karev, um, to go near, to approach, draw near, draw close, touch, bring, present, offer, but it also means to make war and to wage war to receive and accept. So you can already see within this, because it is the language of duality, it be, you begin to see that the unification of this word into one, if you can see both of it, if you can see both sides. So if this is coming near and approaching and drawing near and drawing close, this also means to make war and to wage war. And why is that? Because in the system of duality, we don't see each other as one. So when we come together in, so, okay, let me back up here a minute. Depending upon where you are in your spiritual maturation or your spiritual adolescence where will completely change the way you see these things. So if you are in the place of duality where you are dueling different concepts within duality in drawing near to certain situations, will cause you to make war or to wage war. Because again, we are talking about something that is happening on the inside of you. That's why the bet is in there. This is something that is happening on the inside of you. So if you're in the system of duality and you're in spiritual adolescence and you see somebody that is on the opposite side of you or somebody that you would register as you know, being offended by whatever because you're looking at in the system of duality, it's going to wage war and make war on the inside of you. But it also means to be a friend. <laughs> he befriended. I, I love it, right? And this word also means in an interior and in an inward part. In the midst. So look, at, so look at these words. Battle and war, a match, a game. The midst, the interior, as connected to the heart. So the... Micheline's coming back in. <clears throat> Hello, Micheline. I'm glad to have you back. So in the midst, in the interior, or a hostile approach is completely dependent upon where you are in your spiritual maturation. And it, and it takes encompasses a match in a game. 
because you've heard the game of life and you've heard in the system of duality and I have likened it to a chessboard, moving chess pieces around in the system of duality. And you can totally see this with a Hegelian dialectic that they present to us about problem, reaction, solution. It's a game of manipulation of those who are service to self and those who are service to others in how we move our chess pieces about, you know, around on the board. Wow. I, it's so amazing to see the duality right in the language, but to see that you can change it because when we look at it, the resolve, as I say, always, always, always comes through the letters. So compress light on the inside of you, raise you up from your beast ego nature and build yourself on the inside. This is what's going to allow you to be able to befriend people that are opposing or opposite of you instead of you making war with them because it's all a game. <laughs> it's a game that we entered into to gain experience. And this is what I find, again, I laugh at myself because I use interesting and fascinating all the time. Just have to deal with it until I find another word. What I find fascinating is that the gematria of this word, kufuresh bet, and again, if you don't, to if anybody doesn't know what gematria mean, it's the number total of the letters when they're added together because each letter has a number associated with it. The same word with karav is boker and boker. So if you've ever heard the phrase boker tov, I say it in my videos, boker tov, yom tov, zarim tovim. Boker tov means good morning. It means the morning, but it really means the dawn of the light, to break forth the dawn of the light. So that should maybe start triggering some things in your mind when I mention light, because it also means to examine thoroughly and to scrutinize. Those are the original meanings of this word. But when we look at it, to cleave and to split, examine and investigate it, he sought, he distinguished, he differentiated, attended, highly criticized, reviewed, censored. And that is not... So it's not abandon morning, it's to abandon. To abandon. Morning, cattle, herd, oxen, the plowing animal. So when we see the plowing animal and we're talking about oxen, we already know that if it's mentioning oxen, you guys, if you don't know what the pictograph form is of the ancient Hebrew alphabet, you would not know that the ox head is the letter Aleph. It is the letter Aleph, which is the representation of one, the many who make up one. It's the mystery of the many that make up one, which is part and is the Christ anointing. So when you take a look at this, this is letting us know that when we go through the spiritual maturation, because it, it didn't come out and say Boker, it was Karav. This is the maturation of going from the place of Boker where you're examining, investigating, distinguishing, differentiating it to flipping the order around. Instead of it being on the inside where you're compressing light, now you've compressed the light to raise you up on the inside. You're raising yourself up out of the lower beast nature on the inside. And hopefully you guys are, are connecting that here. Because it's the same gematria, the word frequency is in there, but it is flipping the order because the order is changed based upon your spiritual maturation. And this, the reason why it was written this way, and you can tell it's to a mature audience, is because you've already connected to mother in humility, which means that you've connected to the golden rule, and you've connected to father in meekness, which is power under control. That is why this word was written in the mature form. And again, to break forth of the dawn of the light. So kufresh, let's take a look here. Kufresh, so part of the hidden word, means cool, coldness, and chill. So think of, I would rather you be hot or cold. And the reason why there's coldness in there is because you haven't dealt with the inside. The inside is what makes you hot. It's the shemesh. It's the center candle that ignites a burning, hot, uh, a burning heart 
that then puts the flame of God ignited within you on the inside. But without building the inside, the heart, because the inside, the interior is the heart level, you remain as being cold and cool as being one who is chilly because you haven't built your heart. You haven't built the inside. And the Resh Bet means enough, much, many, large, mighty, abounding, abundant, honored, important, Lord, chief, master, teacher. So think of rabbi. So those of us who have been involved in the, the Hebrew Roots Movement know that Paul is known as Rav Shiliak Shaul. Rav meaning master, teacher, Shiliak, apostle, Paul. So he was one that was given the honor, being honored, being called Rav as a master and as a teacher. But it's also a bowman and an archer. And you guys have heard us talk about the path of the arrow many times as being the path in mysticism that mysticism just means experiencing God. Actual experiencing of the divine. That is what the path of the arrow is. So if you've had Holy Spirit encounters, that it goes in with mysticism because you had an experience of the spirit, an experience of God, revelational experience that was personal to you and not through a book, not through reading something, but a personal experience where you became changed. And that is connected into this. And it's meant for us to become a great quantity or a multitude or the majority that would compress light, that would be raised up. And that there would be an abounding amount of mighty people that have become large and great as masters over themselves. That's why the Resh is so important, because this is a first fruit leader that you are now a leader over yourself. And I'm not sure if you guys heard me share the other day that when the beast ego sits upon your amygdala, so your amygdala is the part in your brain that connects you to fight or flight or rest and digest. This is really basic elements of survival or thriving dependent upon what you are ruled by. If you are ruled by fear and fear is a big element within you, then the beast ego is sitting in your head on the amygdala is known as the seat or the throne of the brain. So when the beast ego is sitting up there, which rules and reigns you over you through fear, because it's, you know, you feel like you're separate and it's survival and all of that. And it controls your amygdala and puts you into fight or flight. It is sitting on your brain and saying that it is God over your temple. Your beast ego is antichrist. And this is the part that is very difficult for people to separate themselves from the English narratives. And I get people that will say this all the time or they'll come in and say that I'm wrong or everything else. And I am totally fine with somebody saying that their projection, that what I'm sharing is wrong. I am, I'm so open to right where people is at, are at and I'm not judging them because spiritually, the English narratives were really big for me as well until I started digging in. So again, the beast ego sits itself upon the throne of your brain, of your temple, declaring it is God over you because it controls and manipulates you and is anti-Christ, anti-anointing because the beast ego separates you from anything and everyone unless it finds a common factor so it's no longer afraid. Hopefully you guys are connecting to that. So this is how we become a master over ourselves by compressing light and raising ourselves up. Again, if you guys have any questions or you wanna make comments, please make some notes so that we can open this up for discussion afterwards. So now we get to the word disciple and follower. And I, you guys will probably find this fairly interesting. I did when the first time I saw this because I didn't know, you know, why is the word disciple the way it is used? What are the letters that are involved? <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, of course it is. So the root of disciple is Lamed Memdalet. 
without the yod. I highlighted the yod because I can't really separate it out. So the root is Lamed Mem and then the Dalit. Now, if some of you have been following me um, for a while, um, hold on just a second here. I'm needing to um, mute some people here. Whoever is not muted, I need to have you guys mute yourself because I'm picking up some background background information or background noise. So if you're not muted, please, please mute yourself. I'd appreciate it. Just helps. Thank you. Thank you. So Lamed, if you've watched many of my teachings before, you know that Lamed Mem Dalit is how you spell the symbol Lamed, this little guy right here that I got my cursor on. Those are the constituent letters that spell the Lamed. <laughs> and that's so it's literally the Lamed is right here. It's spelled out for us. And Lamed Mem Dalit, I didn't put it in its Hebrew form. I just put it in bold caps so you know that it is literally the, the spelling of the symbol. It means the rod of the teacher, authority, to accustom, to learn, learned, studied, put together, compiled, brought together, connected, to teach, was trained, study, and knowledge. There is so much in this word. And the base origin means to learn, to prick, sting, incite, and goad. So what is going on here? Well, what we see added to this is we have that vision within. So just like I was sharing before, finishing up about the why, the reason the wife had prepared herself, we had that yod on the inside of the word tov, to be good, the wrestle that is good. So the disciples were given a vision that they would, that was placed on the inside of them. Power, means, and direction to go through the door of the inner man to deliver themselves from their weak and feeble position through ego. That was the first thing. So you think about it. So Yeshua coming as mother had to give them the powerful vision so that they wouldn't perish because it is our beast ego that causes us to perish. So think about it. The beast ego is the one that wages war. The beast ego is the one that says, I don't have enough resources, so I must take from you. Think about countries that go to war. Oh, we are doing this because I need your resources for my people. I don't care about you. That's all beast ego. That is all fear oriented. And the beast ego is what causes us to go to war based on fear, based on control and manipulation. So if you don't aren't aware of it, you're going to perish or you're going to cause other people to perish. And if you cause other people to perish, you are killing yourself. You're perishing yourself because we're all one. So these disciples were given this vision on the inside. And right now it shows that they have the mark of mother. So in other words, the reason why they were able to follow and be a disciple of Yeshua and be in his inner circle is they already had the mark of mother. And, and I want to connect this a little bit further, and, 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 you'll, and I'll, this will make sense. If you're already reading what I wrote, you'll be able to connect the dot. But if not, just follow with the letters and I'll get there. So they already have the mark of mother, which means they already have the golden rule. They are already treating one another the way they want to be treated, so they're safe around one another. So Yeshua didn't have to deal with the beast ego. Didn't mean that he didn't have to deal with the ego. <laughs> just didn't have to deal with the beast ego. So they were safe and he brought them into his inner circle, circle of teaching. So in other words, they passed their bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah, meaning they were sons and daughters of the commandments. They had already passed that. They had already become it. They were already accountable to their actions, meaning that they had already entered into bride status. They were no longer spiritual adolescent children harming one another. They entered into the be truth. They were of the bride already. That's what this mark means, having that you are the bride. So then they were instructed, being instructed in the living water teachings that gave them power on the inside to go through the door so they could connect to father, have his teachings revealed to them where the father would give them power. So Yeshua was teaching them and revealing to them father's power. Does that make sense? So they were connected already in meekness. They had already had power under control so that he could reveal, reveal the power of father's teachings. So if you want to think about this, again, I'm very cautious how I'm saying this, because if we are in the spiritual adolescent side, we are going to take this somewhere that it doesn't mean to be, because I'm speaking to a mature audience here. 
The revelation of the Father's teaching is the deep, esoteric, hidden knowledge that is meant to be given to the spiritually mature that already have mother's mark. If you don't go the way of the right and you go into Father's teaching without going into the light first, you are going to be entering into the dark without the light, which means you are spiritually immature and you will be committing acts of evil as a child that does harm to others. I'm hoping that makes sense. So Yeshua, because they had already gone through and they were accountable for their actions, could reveal the Father's power to them through the sacred languages because the language of the light of the letters of light and the letters of dark, the letters of creation have power to them and they're only be meant, meant to be given to those who are already in the be truth, betrothed as the bride waiting to become the wife. They hadn't become the wife yet. They were in the process of learning that. So when we look at it again, yo Dalit which is how you spell this little guy right here, means the work and the deed of the hand, the open hand that gives. So these disciples were not takers. They already were serving others. They had the heart to give. That is why the yod is in the middle because it's in the center. And anytime anything that is in the center of the word or the center of your being, it is a reference to your heart. So within their heart, they already wanted to give. And they have the power, means, and direction on the inside to do it. Now look at this, something that's hidden here. The Tavla Med means mound, hill, heap of runes, but it also means the breasts of a woman. They were proficient in the milk of the word. They already had that right here. That is why he was able to reveal to them the meat of the word and why Paul is writing saying, you ought to be teachers by now, but I have to take you back to the milk of the word because you don't have it. You don't even have this idea of how to treat other people because what do you keep doing? You're separating and you're dividing and you're harming people because of your separating and dividing instead of realizing that we are to, to orient ourselves so that we're not hurting people. And if you don't think that separation and division doesn't hurt people, ask all the children that had wounds from fear of abandonment because they were separated from their parents. And I can tell you those are very, very deep wounds. Rejection, deep wound. So the disciples, that is a big, big, big word right there to see what made them who they were and why they were able to be revealed these deeper teachings. Because again, remember this verse is about why are you, why do you speak in parables? And so the disciples are asking, here's where they're asking, right? Say, speak, announce, affirm, and said to him, and said to him, but there is much to see in this word. And again, you wouldn't see it in English because the translators would just say and said like they did. So they were coming from the place of humility because it's already showing that they are connected to mother here. So they're saying it in a teachable and a humble position, coming to mother and, and, and asking this. And because they want to be able to have it revealed to them the power that is necessary to deal with their fallen flesh. That's really what they're saying. So there's there's power, but we're still in our fallen flesh. We're trying to figure this out because we know that we need to get rid of this or we need to transmute it into something different, but we're still have that fallen ego nature that needs some assistance. So we're gonna come to you in this. So what it is saying to us outside of the narrative is, if you have questions, show up asking mother, by being teachable and humble because mother is going to give you probably, <laughs> I say this because it's in here, mother is Aleph Ma, Mem and bitter is Mem Resh. In other words, mother's gonna give you the bitter truth. The oneness principle that needs to be found while we're in the waters of chaos to raise us up out of our beast ego nature so we can be first fruit leaders because the power needs to be given to us through father through the hidden teachings to really fully deal with our fallen flesh because we're, we're needing to produce progeny, an heir to a throne, 
But if we stay in the fallen nature, which is in the material world, and we don't elevate the noon, then we are just, we are continuing to propagate through our children a fallen flesh message because we haven't done anything. So there's a lot that's being said here. And this word is a Hebrew idiom. That means the question is the answer. The question is the answer. The question, mother is going to give you the answer because it's in there. You've got a bitter walk that you have to go through. You need to find oneness unity in the waters of chaos so you could be raised up. And this is also connected to commanded, ordered, he said in his heart and he thought. To be high, speech, saying, utterance, word. So this is even taking in considerations, saying it in our heart and considering containing it within thought as well. So are we in unity consciousness with our thought in oneness or are we still holding to the bitterness of being separated? Because I'll tell you, the beast ego nature is the one that holds on to bitterness, anger, and resentment because you're still in the chaotic waters because you haven't found oneness, but mother's trying to bring that. And so when we take a look even at another hidden mystery that is in here, we have Aldo Fresh, which is a compounded or a, um, oh, what is the word I'm looking for? So it took the Vav out of the center of it and it has a Mem instead. And Aldo Fresh is a shortened, shortened form of the word that means light. So you have chaos within the within your light, chaos within the light, chaos on the inside of you, which is diminishing your light. And then when we move into the next word, we have a standing lamed. And, and you wouldn't see this. You wouldn't know that normally it's a, stand, a standing lamed. And so we already broke down what lamed means, what all those letters mean that are just summed up in this little symbol, hence why all of sacred writings are shorthand because someone who sees a standing Lamed would know all of this. It's like, oh yeah, that's all within here. So said to him, the teaching shepherd, because it's a shepherd's staff, the rod of the teacher, said to him, the one who has authority, please reveal this to us. So in its writing is that the shepherd who has the authority is going to reveal to you the answers to your questions. How do we deal with our fallen flesh? And I wanted to reiterate, I have shared it before too, um, but again, it, it, it helps to hear it multiple times so that we can really sink this in. Whenever we have a hey that is added to the prefix of the word, it means it makes it a noun of individuality. So this revelation on the front of the word is actually more of an individual revelation. When it is on the suffix side, it is in the collective sense. So this is affecting all of the collective. So when we look in oneness unity, everything that we do affects the collective. The ego lets us think that everything that we do is separate. So therefore, when we go and do things that harm others or even harming ourselves, we think that it doesn't affect everyone, but we're all connected as one. So our harming others is literally, or if we harm ourselves, we're harming others. If we have stinking thinking on the inside, we're harming how we see the collective. When we are doing things to edify and encourage and exhort, we're assisting others. So every word, every action, everything that we do, every deed is connected. And Aleph or the He is spelled two ways. So the constituent letters are either hey, hey, or hey, Aleph. They have the same sound. So the twin revelations, hey, hey, that are the revelation of oneness unity. So you have to have mother reveal it to you. You have to have father reveal it to you. And you will find out by taking both of them, it will reveal oneness unity. And this means lo and behold. So the teaching shepherd is going to come and bring to you Lo and behold, that which you ask, because here is another, this is the question. It's like, why, wherefore, to what? And when you look at this, again, I try not to get exasperated with the English, but it makes it, when I look at the, everything that is missed, the root is mem noon. So what do we have here? 
we have Mem and we have the risen noon. So this is a question. So look what I didn't highlight. It's a Lamed Aleph. The Lamed Aleph is the instructions in the way of one. Mem noon, this would have had a fallen noon. It's right here. So remember, again, if we're not connecting it, they were asking about, or it was written for us to say, what do we do with about the fallen flesh? Because we're, you know, it's what's causing issues. And right here, it's saying that you need to be instructed in the way of one through the living water teachings, which is the spiritual path that will raise you up out of your fallen flesh nature to change your flesh. This is risen flesh. This isn't fallen flesh. This is your nature completely being changed. And this is also the root. This word right here in Hebrew means manna. What is it? So this question is being presented. So what is this? What kind? How do we do this? Because we want to be part of oneness unity, but our fallen flesh is keeping us separated. So we know that you have the teachings. So the teachings in the way of one are going to change us so that we can be, a, we can be part of oneness unity. Because why? We are, we've been in this comparison. We've been comparing all along. And the answer, because the Aleph is added here, and Nun Aleph, another hidden word in here, means I, we beseech thee. I, we pray. We are praying and beseeching you that you would have the instructions necessary through the living water teachings to take the spiritual path to find oneness, unity. And then the question is even like, well, why? Well, the question is the answer. We ask why, and it's so that we can be a part of, like a stringed instrument, like a chord that is being played. So think of this way. We've heard like Dr. Joe Dispenza's work or Greg Braden, where they talk about heart-brain coherence. When your heart and your brain are not lined up, if they are not in the place of peace and gratitude, you have, you don't have harmony. You don't, you're not in coherence. Dis, it's without coherence. This is the resolve to be able to bring the heart and the brain together in coherence by understanding that we are one because most of our trauma has been because we have been separated from love. We've been abandoned. We've been rejected. All of these core wounds are because we have felt that we are separated. So please, I beseech thee, I, we pray collectively that we would find the spiritual path that will bring us into oneness unity because that will resolve the issue of the fallen flesh that says that we are separated. Drilling down a little bit more here, guys. I know there's a lot of information and I'm going through the minutia. So then we get into comparisons and parables. And this word has wonderful treasure in it. Like, <laughs> I, I get so blown away when I see this of what is being conveyed to us that the writings, so that if we would see them, that we would really be able to change and transform ourselves. So the word parable it's uh, in its root is pe lamed aleph tav aleph. So the bet has been added. So the parables are meant for us on the inside. And if it's talking about comparisons, it's like we're comparing things of our inside from our outside. And it will make much more sense when we get to this next word speak of why I say that. We're going to get to that. So the bet has been added. And so other words or other meanings of this word is illustrations, analogies, and allegory. That is a huge piece for us to add to a parable. Illustrations, analogies, and allegories. Because that's much of how Yeshua spoke to the masses. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't a literal sense because he was doing it so they could build themselves on the outside or in the inside, not the outside. 
It's the inside job. And notice the bet is pierced. So this is not the V sound. This is the B sound. This means they're inside. He's doing it to pierce them on the inside. If they can connect to what he's saying through analogy and through allegory and illustrations, that it would, it would, it would produce change on the inside. It would pierce their heart. This is the center of your temple and the center of everything and anything is always connected in Hebrew and Aramaic to your heart. That is why the Lamed is the center letter of, the, of Hebrew and Aramaic and why it is the first letter for heart, Lamed Bet, instruction on the inside. So here's another little hidden nugget that was written in this word. Pela med olive means a wonder and a marvel to be extraordinary, but it also means to be difficult, to be wonderful, to distinguish and to make special. The original lean meaning was to cleave, to split, set apart and separate. Now I want you guys to connect this. The gematria of this word, and I didn't type it because I didn't want you to quite connect it yet because I didn't want you to lose what is being said here. The gematria, the same word. And if you guys have been with me a while and you've been seeing these letters, you're going to know what I'm going to highlight. Is Aleph Lamed Pe. That is how you spell the Aleph. That's how you spell it. It's in the opposite order, but it is connected. So if you guys have read the Course of Mir a Course in Miracles, if you've read Law of One material, what I find incredible is that I was studying these materials for three years before the Law of One came into my path and before the Course in Miracles came in my path. And when I began looking at that information, it is Aramaic and Hebrew through and through, but because the information was being conveyed to people, they couldn't use Hebrew words because the people that they were communicating to didn't know the language. So they had to convey through illustrations, analogies and allegories to try to bring oneness unity when the language itself has it. So I would read it and I'm like, oh my gosh, he's describing this letter. Oh my gosh, that's this Hebrew word. Oh my gosh, it's this and this. It's all within the languages so that we can be a wonder and a marvel to be extraordinary, but it's going to be difficult. It's going to be a difficult path for us to walk, but it's going to be wonderful and it's going to distinguish and make us special because in the beginning we were split and set apart and separated. So if you go on the inside and allow these things as illustrations and analogies and allegories that are meant for you to see on the inside what is going on with you, talking about the mirror like we were before, what is going on on the inside of you? Because it should be speaking to you to bring revelation in order to instruct you in the way of one so that you can then have the mark of the Father's covenant and fully enter into oneness unity. Because the other part that is hidden in here, there's several of it, is the word atonement which means come and bring. It is the coming and the bringing of the mother who is one and the father who is one, the covenant that connects them. And I shared with you guys last week about the beauty of covenant because it has to do with creation. It has to do with that which we are eating, that which is forming us, that which is sustaining us to make us pure and innocent, that gives us the power to be marked with a different signature frequency as no longer divided, but now into oneness unity, that we become the wonder and a marvel, that we are distinguished and we've been made special because we entered in because we did the inside work. The other little nugget that's in here is the Bet Lamed that has a pay in the middle. Bet Lamed is the opposite order. It is a Hebrew word that means heart. This is, this might make me a little emotional here. So hang with me here. Because I was there. If you guys have heard my testimony and my story, you know. I had such a fearful and anxious heart that I almost died. I had multiple B vitamin crashes that took my, almost took my life. And the doctor was very, very concerned the first time I went in because he said I was two weeks away from expiring if I wouldn't have come in to see him because I had so much fear. So when we look at the bet, it means inside. And we look at the 
Lamed, it means authority, but it means an anxious heart who is fearful and terrified. So my fear was so much that it was killing me because it was the authority that was on the inside of me. But when you flip it to Lamed Bet, it means that I have the authority over my inside. That's what's so fascinating. My inside fear doesn't have authority over me. I have authority over my inside. So when we have a fearful and anxious heart, we need to listen to the mouth that is speaking on the inside of us. That's why when I talk to people and they have questions, I'm always pointing them to go on the inside because that's where source, that's where Abba dwells, that's where source creator is, is on the inside. And it is the mouth that is going to speak revelation to you to deal with your fearful and anxious heart so that you can be pierced on the inside. Listen to the that which is being revealed to you to teach and instruct you in the way of one so that you can be Become the wonder and the marvel so you are no longer separated because it is fear that comes from the sense of us feeling like we are separated, that we are orphans, that we have been left alone when we are all one. And we need to be instructed in that. And we need to let the light come in to raise us up out of that poor and destitute spot because the covenants are meant to come and bring us into oneness unity. That's what makes us a wonder, a sign, a marvel, a wonder, and to be extraordinary because we built ourselves on the inside. And then when you see what's coming in, how we're finishing this, because it's the last three words here. I was pondering this the other day with, with my husband, this specific word here. And we actually had a wonderful conversation, but I didn't have a recorder with me and I really wish we would have. Um, and we'll probably discuss it again, but it's the word that means speak. And do speak and when you see it it's to say tell talk communicate and describe in a in its root it's memlamed so when you see it written this way i remember the first time i saw this word i was like whoa whoa what's going on here we have two mems and we have two lameds side by side i was like oh okay wow there's something really going on here because i knew that this had to do with the ark of the covenant the pattern of the cherubim and i'm going to be releasing something um probably tomorrow about angel morphology again, something else that spirit was sharing with me um, that will really connect to this. So if you're interested, I will have that. I was uh, editing it today, um, talking about the cherubim to the seraphim message and uh, Regina and I went through a, a verse before you guys, uh, before I entered, had you guys enter in that is connected to that as well. It's pretty fascinating. I'll get that out as ASAP as well. But we have mother and father that are standing side by side, and they literally are the mirror of one another. And when you enter into mother's teaching, it's chaos because you don't really know what's being taught. When you enter into father's teachings, it's chaos. This is literally showing you that it's the learning curve when you first enter in because through the sacred languages, it's like, okay, you need to learn the Hebrew and then you have to go into the Aramaic, but it's all Greek to you, <laughs> pun intended. And it's going to seem like chaos, but these are twin teaching shepherds of light that are coming side by side to lift you up to be a teaching shepherd of mother and to be a teaching shepherd of father. And that's what Yeshua in this word speaking in this form, because the disciples understood this principle. They, you know, again, I'm talking about divorcing ourselves from the narrative, but yet when we see what, what, disciple was what he was trying to convey to them so the writers are saying okay here's the story but now make it personal to you what i'm trying to convey to you when i'm writing is that there are twin teachings that are going to be chaotic to you in the beginning but they are meant to raise you up to become a teaching shepherd that are instructing your heart the center of your being so that you have a staff of authority of both mother and father and here is what I saw the other day that I was like, oh my gosh, why didn't I see this before? Here's Memlamed on the inside of Memlamed. Your inside speech and communication is going to be reflected on the outside. Your inside speech and communication is going to be that which you speak on the outside. Memlamed means to be full. So if you have chaos on the inside of you, 
The chaos is meant to be a catalyst to instruct you. But if you still have chaos in the inside, it's going to manifest on the outside. Is that's what's leading you. But the resolve always comes in the letters. Always, always, always. Go through the twin teachings. They're going to be chaotic at first, but they're meant to instruct you, to goad you, urge you on, to lift you up, to deliver you from your lower beast ego nature. But your speech on the inside is going to be reflected on the outside. Wow. I mean, that was that was big for me. And then Mem Lamed Lamed <laughs> is the crushing stone in an olive press. <laughs> A crushing stone. Yeah. Chaos crushes you. This is where pain and suffering comes from. But that is to produce light in you, to give you authority, to have a staff of authority. Because when you overcome your pain and your suffering, when you overcome those things which were consuming you on the inside, keeping you in the lower narrative and freeing you from having this revelation of who you are, it was meant to instruct you, to give you authority. Twin, double portion authority. And then we have thou. Here's the word, the word made flesh, the Aleph and the Tav, the spiritual path found on the inside that changes your flesh. So now that you are the word manifested in the flesh, producing airship to the throne, a strong base to stand on as you are now producing life within you because the seed of life was manifested within you. I find it interesting that in the New Testament, Aleph Tav is written as Aleph Yod Tav. So the Yod is not here. The power was given and it came from the word Yish, meaning a being of substance. So when you have a vision that is placed with inside of you, in your heart, you are not perishing because my people perish for a lack of vision. But when you take that vision and you put it in on the inside of you and you deal with your beast ego and you deliver yourself from that lower nature, you have changed flesh. And now you are not the all of Yod Tav, a being with substance. You are now the word made flesh. You are now strong. You are one strong, strong one that has been given life, that has the covenant of love as the word made flesh, as one who was pierced on the inside. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. And then we end up with the word with. But when you dissect it, when you take a look at the hidden treasure that is in here, and this is why I painstakingly go letter by letter, word by word to show you the hidden treasure. Because when you do this and you make it personal and you take it within you, it changes you. Look at what this word means. Yes, there is the conjunction. It is the connecting word, meaning uh, connected with, on, at, to, against, beside, along, and among. Yes, I get that. But it is also the same word that means not only with and together, but it means kinsman, relative, related, to join, to connect, together with, close to. And its original meaning of ein mem, the root right here, ein mem, the original meaning of this is those united, those who are related, those who are family, the words that have become flesh. And Havav Noon, which was added to the suffix because the root is Ein Mem. And when you take a look in Strong's, it actually connects it to the flock of Jacob, to the tribesmen specifically of Israel. That's what Strong has added in that. Havav Noon means riches and wealth, capital, enough. It also means to dare and to venture. So to dare and to venture, to go into the Father's teaching, the hidden esoteric side, so that you can connect to Father and learn to deal with your fallen flesh. Because when you do that, you are going to have more than enough. You are going to have riches and wealth beyond measure because you allowed yourself to be connected, to be pierced, to have the eyes to see what the living water teachings were. First, they were chaotic. The final mem is behind it. The final mem is Father's teaching, which is the waters of Shalom, that is bringing the reveal, the revelation to you of the Father's teaching so that you can connect to Father, being pierced in your sovereign stand as one who has power 
under control, meekness, while in your flesh. You dared to take the journey to go into the dark, hidden nature of yourself to reveal your true self so that you could become the words made flesh so that the speech that is coming out of you will be the same as it is on the inside on the outside as it is on the inside that the rivers of living water would come and speak forth because you have the staff of authority through mother and father that affects your speech and everything that you speak of because you worked on the inside, building yourself up, becoming a wonder and a marvel to become extraordinary because the Aleph Tav Aleph, mother and father's covenant of one that is connected was brought to you so that your anxious and fearful heart could be instructed if you would listen to the revelation that was coming from you on the inside. And the thing that I didn't add, you guys, Bet Lamed also means the word husband. So that the husband would bring revelation to you on the inside to reveal to you your anxious heart so that you could flip it around. You could be learned and taught in the way of one, which will make you realize that you are already, you are already wonderfully made. You are already special. You are already extraordinary. But at the beginning, the ego came in to split you and to set you apart to make you feel divided. And so we beseech and we pray, please be instructed so that you can be a part of this beautiful stringed instrument so that we can play beautiful music as a chord together. Because we're all asking, how do we do this? How do we become this? Well, you need to learn the way of one and you need to go through your daily manna that will raise and change your flesh because the instruction and the revelation is coming to you. It's going to prick and it's going to sting, it's going to sting you it's going to do all of those things, but really it is going to produce a nature that is changed to bring us together, learning and studying together and putting together so that we can connect to one another. So we are trained up in things that we are studying, the knowledge that we have in learning about the way of one. And it's going to be bitter at first, but it is meant to raise us up because it's always the myrrh before the frankincense, the bitter before the sweet. And we must take that chaos that is on the inside of us and change it so that we are the light. But we have to connect to mother and father first. We need to connect to mother in humility so that she can give us the vision from the father, the powerful vision of his power to deal with our flesh, because this is what's going to instruct us. This is going to teach us from the inside out so that we have the mark of father, mother, so that we're safe with one another, so that we are accountable for our own actions. And we are the bride. We are of the ones who are be truth, the betrothed, the ones that are of the truth. They are connected in meekness. They have power under control because they took the vision to tame their beast ego nature. And it was revealed to them the power of the father, the hidden teachings for the mature that are meant to draw near to us if we choose to connect to both mother and father because we were split but we need to compress light and we need to find that narrow path between the light and dark so that we are no longer cold and are on are at that place where we are poor and destitute but we need to become mighty and abounding we need to become honored and abundant learning to become master over ourselves and to become a teacher, to take the path of the arrow so that we are the archer, so that we make up the majority. We make up the majority. We are the ones that made the mess and we're the ones that need to clean it up. And we need to realize that as we are drawing near to one another, that we're all building ourselves on the inside and we all started in the same place as the poor and the destitute to help raise each other up so that we no longer war and make war within us or with one another, that we learn to accept one another, that on the inside that we are beautifully made in the midst, in the interior of who we are at the heart level, if we are not cold, if our heart has been pierced and we have love within, that we can connect to one another in the heart level. That is what this verse is saying to us. That is what I see through my interpretation of what 
when the disciples, when it just said, why do you speak in parables to them? Because it's based on our maturation. Are you still making war on the inside? Because if you're waging war on the inside of you, you're going to wage war on the outside. Because we need to find the resolve on the inside by compressing light. Light is information. Light is. Light doesn't take roles. Light doesn't take narrations. It is truth. And it reveals to us the truth of who we are as one, no longer divided. That is what is shared in this writing.